thousands of families in Pennsylvania are providing permanency to children. In a committed effort to help sustain, support, and preserve the family unit, the Pennsylvania Department of Public Welfare and the Statewide Adoption and Permanency Network has listened to the voices of these families regarding their needs. The outcome is the development of statewide post-permanency services. These services are provided to any family who has adopted either domestic, international, or through the child welfare system. Services are also available to any family who is a fit and willing relative or a permanent legal custodian. Let's listen to those voices of Pennsylvania's families. Because if there's not support there for families who adopt a child, you run the chance of an adoption dissolving, a family broken, a child experience, experiencing a horrible loss. And it was just beyond my control. And I just didn't, couldn't handle it. And I wanted him, him to be safe and re, for him to receive all the help that he needed. And it got to the point where it was like, okay, I've invested 10 years in this child and do I just give up? And I didn't want to do that because I'm not a quitter. And so that's when I reached out for help. I know the exact moment when I had to admit that this is not what it should be. I needed support for legal issues, um, bonding and parenting skills renewed because of the fact that I was taking home, um, over a whole new um, era of raising a grandchild all over again. We had no kids of our own before we adopted. And so that kind of gave us um, a double challenge. We sometimes, we just needed a break from the kind of behaviors that we were having to deal with. Well, I thought that he was at times being defiant and I really didn't understand what the situation was. It's like there were times when I was thinking, oh no, you know, I don't know how to handle this part. The stress of daily living is exhausting. He just had a very, very difficult time uh, with the mother figure. Mm -hmm. And being me, that was the, mm -hmm. the challenge. Just to be able to get away from him would have meant the world. And it got to the point where it's, you know, do we send her back? It had gotten that bad. I felt that a lot of what we were facing was probably adoption related. He was having a lot of acting out behaviors, which seemed specific to children that are adopted. And I always blamed myself, and I just said, I'm so tired. I'm just so tired from this. The person that I spoke to again, not only had the information about the program that was to come um, and all the services that would be coming with it to give me the hope. Hope for Pennsylvania families begins with a phone call. A call to the SWAN helpline is the first step to accessing case advocacy, respite, and support group services. Helpline staff are ready to listen to families and direct them to an agency who can assist them. And I was real frustrated, and she heard the frustration in my voice. And I was actually at work. <laughs> and she was able to calm me down. And she didn't offer any advice, and she just listened to me. And I think that was the best thing for me at that time. She just really listened and just heard everything I was saying, and then repeating, making sure she had a clear understanding. And then she didn't promise me anything. She was like, I will try to do my best. I need to get with my supervisor. But she never, she gave me a number to contact her if I ever needed someone to talk to. I mean, it was just really great. She was very helpful. It was a very positive call. Um, the person that I spoke to was very helpful. They wanted to make sure that I got the services that I needed. And they also wanted to make me aware of the services available to me. My first uh, call to helpline was like a godsend, not only for me and for other people in our group. Uh, extremely helpful. <laughs> it's, I, I, very calm, very soothing. It caused me to um, feel a little better about the choices that I made in terms of what brought me to the phone. Hello, Statewide Adoption and Permanency Network. This is Susan. How can I help you? Yes, I had just recently adopted my son and I was wondering what services are available to me. Mm -hmm. I'm a single parent and I need uh, assistance with uh, respite care. Oh, basically, there are three services available. They are respite, case advocacy, and support group. Case advocacy is designed to provide support for families via a case advocate. 
By identifying family strengths and needs, this service supports the entire family. The advocate can assist the family uh, by attending meetings or helping them access services in the community. Respite services support the family by developing resources that help alleviate the pressures of parenting special needs children. Trained respite providers will provide a safe environment for your child while you enjoy a much needed break. Respite can occur in your own home or outside your home. This is a decision you can make with a respite provider. The support group is a place where families can meet with other adoptive parents to build relationships and form a community of support and mentoring. First of all, every family seeking post-permanency services is required to have an initial assessment. The assessment is the first step and will be completed within 30 days. I'll give you a list of agencies in your area that provide assessment services and you can choose an agency to complete your assessment. In a short time, someone from that agency will call you to set up an appointment to come to your home. The caseworker will talk with you and your family to gather information. This process can be lengthy and may include two visits in your home. The caseworker will talk with your entire family to build on family strengths in order to recommend the best possible services. Are you interested in receiving post-permanency services? I am definitely interested. Okay. I'd like to gather some information from you so that I can process your referral. Mm -hmm. I will need to gather some family information, including your name, address, county of residence, and other pertinent information. Do you have any other questions? No, not at this time. May I call you in about a month to see how things are going? That would be great. Afternoon is the best time to call. I'll make a note of that. Please feel free to call back if you have any further questions. Thank you. Bye-bye. The assessment process involves the entire family. A caseworker will meet with your family to build on family strengths in order to recommend the best possible post-permanency services. Going through the struggles with an adopted child can affect your whole family. Um, as a single parent, I had I was not sure what I had available to me. I kept saying to myself, we need this help, we want this help, we're going to do what it takes to, to get what we need here. Knowing that this contact person that came in that could provide and sit, not only talk about uh, you know, the services, but she just made me feel so comfortable and relaxed. The setting was certainly non-threatening and just kind of exploring what are our needs so that they can better provide us the services that would fit our specific situation. I mean, but she spent a lot of time with my son, Michael, who was receiving the help and just talking to him and trying to get an understanding where he was where he was coming from, why he was doing certain things and so forth. And he felt comfortable with her too because he shared a lot of stuff with her and it was helpful for both of us. If I needed it, they were there for me. He was so involved that he came to our house on a bus. <laughs> so. And he said his car was down, but he had made the appointment, so he hopped on a bus and rode out from town. We just had a nice conversation with him, just like he was a, an old friend of ours. The best thing for me was not feeling um, judged. They answered all my questions. Um, they knew what kind of situation I was in and they didn't prejudge me. We were seeking help, so we knew that there was no need keeping secrets or anything, because how could you get help if you do that? We felt that everything needed to come out because our main concern was to get help for the child. To have somebody that's main goal is focused on your family's strengths and preservation is so important. And it was just kind of a very much of a conversation almost more than any kind of interview or answering questions and it was just a way to explore what would be the ideal services that might meet our our needs. Case advocacy not only provides ongoing support to families but is also their link to community services and connections. The case manager that we have now through post-permanency is still able to tell us about some new services that are available and some financial help that would be associated to those services. Um, and they're a phone call away. Uh, and we really sense, you know, that the people, their hearts are here to help the families. And also, like, he 
let me know anytime he was in a crisis mode or getting ready to get into a crisis mode, he gave me a number that I can reach him anytime. I appreciate the fact that our caseworker has said she is there to be an additional person. We actually do have another caseworker and another agency, but that she would be there for us or for our daughter to help find services. It wasn't like we got them set up with services and we'll move on to the next mm -hmm. family and we got, like, we didn't feel like we were ever forgotten about. I just think it's really important that people understand that kids that have, that are adopted have specific needs and you really need somebody that's familiar with those needs and who can best address those needs and that's not always the mainstream um, healthcare professionals. I felt all the stress relieved from me because they just, Everybody just came in, just helped out real quick, and it was just, it was great, it was awesome. Our caseworker has just kind of given us an overall view of what services are available in the community. They work more towards the feelings of the adopted child. So she was a link there for us. They don't leave me hanging or left me uh, unknowing. Uh, they continue to update me with things that are going on or new uh, options that I have as a single mom. Our caseworker has attended like our IEP meetings at school. Mm -hmm. There's nothing beats a one-on-one -on -one person that you can talk to. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is a wonderful um, way to get resources to find out about what's going on in the community. or And knowledge on ways to parent uh, these children because it's totally different than parenting a child without these issues. They jump right in. It's like a big family. They help the people that need help. But I honestly think that it became such a tighter connection because we had that support in place. The nice part was just knowing that there is these periodic contacts to kind of say, how's it going? What do we need to change? Anything, what would we need to change to try to continue making sure that ample services are provided? I wanted to continue the services because it still it still helped both him and I to go through a journey so that we can be successful at, at where we're going as a family. You know, there's so much time that goes into finding services when you're alone as a parent, but to have this resource that someone can just lay out before you, you can choose this, this, or this, whatever best matches your family's needs is just wonderful. The opportunity to partake of a much needed break makes respite services a key piece of family success. Respite care is good for us because being that we have five teenagers, we definitely need some time to ourselves. So we were not getting opportunities for Kevin and I especially to get together to do things that we needed to do to keep our marriage strong because the stress of having a child with attachment disorder, you need extra time out, more so than even a normal couple. I knew that they were with someone I could trust, someone who could understand their issues, and he kept in contact with me. He was also a single parent too, a single father with raising a son. The respite was a real blessing to us. Respite was really important for us because um, our youngest son has autism. And it's really hard for us sometimes to function as a typical family. My mother is my respite provider, which it works out wonderfully because uh, my son and my mother have a great love affair with each other. As an adoptive family, you need breaks uh, from each other. The stress of daily living is exhausting and you don't have time as a couple to spend together to keep your marriage built up. Because after all, you know, a grandparent needs her health to take care of the, you know, the grandchildren, so um, I used the respite care at that time. I was glad that I had the opportunity to, to have that uh, available to me, the services such as respite care. Respite care was um, a big help, and is, I'm in the process of doing that right now. We love our son, but we still need a break. I love my son and I take care of him, but there are a lot more things that I can do to make life better for the both of us because I have respite care. And she also told us about some other uh, summer camps that would be available for our son. When I found out when the case manager told me about that there was respite available to uh, her, we wanted her to go to camp and so they uh, provided the means for her to 
attend summer camp. We were not really able to leave our daughter in the care of family, which is who we use, and certainly not a babysitter, a teenager, something like that. They would certainly not in any way qualified to handle her. Um, we not only get uh, respite care through your agency, but we also provide it. So to have that service available is just, I just can't say enough for it, it, it just breathes new life into you. The immediate bond between permanency support group families is strong and sustaining. What has been helpful is we needed these kind of connections for a long, long time. We were in desperate need of uh, support talking to other parents. But just being able to talk with a group of people who understood 100% from the beginning, you didn't have to try to explain the situation because they, they were in the middle of it too. So you could, you could verbalize whatever you wanted to say or you could vent your frustrations or your feelings and they knew exactly where you were coming from because they had been there. And we get to talk about what's bothering us and where we could go from there and how to help each other. Sometimes we need help with everyday things. They know the resources that are out there. They have been there. They can tell you just so much information that you could not get on your own. They have been there before you. They have gone through the school systems. They've gone through the government systems. They know everything. I left there and I'm like, these people know so much that we haven't even touched the surface of what's out there. We just sat around and we talked about, you know, how can we, what can we do to better our lives and health while we're raising these grand, the grandchildren. Some of them were kinship adoptions. Some of them were dealing with um, different ages of children. We just all bonded immediately because we all expressed how even our own family members, our churches, or what, whatever community uh, systems we were in, we didn't have that support. Nobody could understand what it meant to deal with these types of mental health issues with an adoptive child. It is such a helpful support group, not only to myself, I know that uh, future parents who are looking into adoption, ones who have just gotten their children, it's a place where everyone can come and feel comfortable and feel like their, their questions will be answered or that someone has had the same issue as they have. It's been good to just have some time to be with other people who, who know the kinds of things you're going through and you just have that connection right away that you can feel comfortable and that you can share and that you can kind of network and learn from one another and I enjoy that. So I really enjoy going. I look forward to going. Um, because I always feel like I get something and I feel sort of rejuvenated when I come out of there, like, okay, I, I think I can do this. I can keep doing this. And you're not blowing it out of proportion. It's just that other people have the same types of problems. And it's nice to be, it's comforting to come here. So I'm just saying there was an immediate trust for me with the group. And that, again, is very comforting. And to be able to just walk into a group full of strangers, basically. And they were strangers and yet they weren't. So that in itself is just, and, there's an incredible comfort and security that comes with that that, you know, I couldn't find anywhere else when it comes to this subject, which is my life. The post-permanency program gives hope to Pennsylvania families. Families describe dark times of isolation, despair, anger, and helplessness. It is the post-permanency program that leads them into the light and guides them through every step of their journey. The post-permanency services for our family helped us to become one of the success stories. Overall, the services have been excellent. I will recommend the services to any adoptive parent who um, not even really having problems, but not in a crisis mode, but before they get to that crisis mode. I would really recommend the post-permanency services. Um, they've just been a source of support for our family, helping us to function as a more typical family would. It was a wonderful experience to know that we still, even after two and a half years, we still had that connection with Swan. I mean, it's been a great hope to keep my son in the home and making sure that he's permanently in the home, so he don't get put back in the system. We love Swan. We love that we have someone that we can turn to when we need them. Lots of times it's a lot of little supports along the way. 
that help a family stand up. It's not something dramatic. It's, it's like I said, someone holding your hands through the journey. They're out there to help you. They stand beside you. They'll help you through because it's not easy. I am so glad that I was able to get these services. I, I don't know what I would have done. I can't stress enough how lost I felt without services 11 years ago and how I struggled and how I thought I didn't do the right thing. And now I feel very, I mean, I have tough days, but I feel empowered. There are resources available. I can call people. Uh, the SWAN Network calls me periodically to see how I'm doing. And, you know, you, so you feel like, yeah, there is help out there. I can do this.